Hi there. In this video we're going to take a look at creating pattern rules from actual shape models. First what we need to think about is what our pattern rule will look like in the form of an expression. A pattern rule in the form of an expression is made up of a couple of things. First you need to have a constant which is represented as one or more numbers. So for example the number 4. And then you also have to have something that changes, a variable that could be used to plug any number in, and for that we often use a letter, A. And then, for example, we might have to, say, add them together. So one of our expressions for a pattern might be 4 plus A. A is the variable, the thing that might change. We might have to plug any number of numbers in there, 4 is always going to remain the same because that part never changes in the shape pattern. Some people are really good at just looking at a pattern and figuring out immediately what the pattern rule is. And sometimes, depending on the pattern, you can do that. Let's look at the one above here. What do you notice in this pattern that stays the same as we move through the figure numbers? Hopefully you spotted the three blue blocks that always stay the same. That means those blocks never change. They're always the same through each of our figure numbers, and we can predict that they'll continue to be, and that means that they're constant. So our constant for this equation is going to be a 3. Unlike the blue blocks, each of our figure numbers has a growing number of red blocks. That number changes. That means it's variable depending on what figure number we're looking at. In figure two, figure one, there are two red blocks. In figure two, there are four red blocks. And in figure three, there are six red blocks. And I have to look for a connection. And what I might notice is that one times two is two, two times two is four, and three times two is six. That means that the number of red blocks is 2 multiplied by the figure number, whatever that is. So in figure 1 it's 2, in figure 2 it's 4, in figure 3 it's 6. And what I have to keep in mind is if I'm looking for the total number of blocks, I have to add all the blocks together. So I'm going to always add my three blocks, my three blue blocks, to whatever the number of red blocks it is. Now looking at this is a little confusing, so what we do is we use a variable to hold the place instead. As I said, we're going to have a constant three blocks at all times. We're always going to uh, add them because uh, we're always looking for a total number. But instead of writing fig number or figure number or something like that, we're going to put two multiplied by, let's say, the letter n for number. So it's three plus two n. This is pretty good, but some people, if they're not paying careful attention with bed mass, can get mildly confused. So what's better is if we can write it out in slightly different order and do something like this. 2n plus 3. That means that 2 times a figure number, whatever number that is in my pattern, plus 3 is going to give me the total number of blocks. Now, if you're not great at visualizing it from the shapes, don't worry. There's another method we can use to solve this, and it'll also let us test our 2n plus 3 and make sure that we did actually do it correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a table of values, simple t-chart table of values in this case, and I'm going to have the term number on one side and the term value on the other side term number simply means what number is my figure in the pattern, and term value means how many total blocks do I have. So for example, in figure 1, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total blocks. In figure 2, I've got 7 total blocks. And in figure 3, I've got 9 total blocks. Now the challenge is I have to test and see does my formula work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards from the formula I have. Does 2 multiplied by 1 plus 3 equal 5? Yeah, it does. So at least for that very first term, that works. Now I have to keep putting it to the test as I move through. So for example, the next one is term 2. So that would be 2 multiplied by 2 
plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 equals 7. So that's good, it works. I'm feeling pretty confident now, but I'd like to try one more time just to be careful. Th 2 multiplied by 3 plus 3, and that definitely 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 equals 9. That's great. It lets me know that our rule works. Now sometimes we're going to run into patterns that aren't quite so simple to figure out. The shapes, for example, aren't going to be color-coded and maybe they're not going to show us the same sort of growth and simple growth as the last one did. In those cases, my strategy is always to start right at the t-chart and work from there. Again, we're going to do term number and term value. In figure 1, my term value is 4. In figure 2, my term value is 7. In figure 3, my term value is 12. So I want to test a few things, starting with the first term to see if I can make some plans and see what, this will, what, what I'll do. So what I want to do is test different expressions that it could be. So I'm going to just think to myself, how can I get from 1 to 4? I'm not going to worry about the rest right now. Well, so for example, I could try the expression n plus 3, because 1 plus 3 would equal 4. I could try the expression n times 4, because 1 times 4 would get to 4 as well. Let's test those first two first and see if we've got one that's fairly easy. 1 plus 3 equals 4, so it works for the ter first term, but the second term is a 2, so let's try that. 2 plus 3 equals 5, but my term value is 7. So that doesn't work for me, unfortunately. We know, then, that this one is not the correct uh, expression. Let's try the other one. 1 times 4 definitely does equal 4, so that works for me. But 2 multiplied by 4, again, does not give me 7. So again, I know that this is not the correct expression. Instead, I've got to start thinking a little more critically. There could be other sort of ways that I can get to it that are sort of close. Um, so, for example, if I think of all my uh, term numbers as square roots, that's something that I often want to try because at this level that's something that you see a lot, numbers that, the term numbers that are getting squared. So 1 squared equals 1, so I would have to do 1 squared plus 3. Let's write down the expression anyway and see. So n squared plus 3. We know it works for the first one. Let's try for the second one. The second one would be 2 to the power of 2 plus 3. 2 to the power of 2 is like 2 times 2. That's 4. 4 plus 3 equals 7. So it looks like we might have the right one here. But again, we always want to test it a third time. We'll try 3 to the power of 2 plus 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3, that's 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. Now you might be wondering, how did I settle on n to the power of 2? Really, all I thought to myself was, if it's not addition, and if it's not multiplication, what are the other ways that I can grow a number? And this is one of the ways that I could still grow a number uh, without um, using just that simple addition or multiplication. So it's really just a guess and check. It was just a, something I tried to see if I could get it to work. I think it would have been hard for me to just look at this pattern and just sort of see that, that pattern of growth. So uh, it was be really beneficial to me that I use the table of values here. And that's something that I would always recommend to students that they give a shot if they have any doubts in their head whatsoever. And even if they feel confident, try it anyway because it's a really good way to check your answer and make sure that it works. Good luck.